Welcome back to Sailing El Haleo. In this week's video, we hit the ground running and we get started on installing an AIS system. I try and keep these videos down to 10 minutes or less, um, and we're gonna be bumping up against that today, so I'll try and get through this as quickly as possible. I'm not gonna show a ton of the actual install. I go through all the components in the end. I think it's more valuable to do it that way when it's all hooked up. And I do have to apologize. Um, I do have asthma and today I'm a little bit wheezier than normal. Um, I don't know why that is, just some days are worse than others. So I know it's annoying as hell, but I am a little wheezy, so I apologize. AIS stands for Automatic Identification System, and it works by communicating between different radio transceivers on boats. So that's why it's connected to the VHF antenna. And it actually collects GPS data through the GPS antenna. It calculates your course, your heading, all of that information. And then it transmits it through the VHF antenna to all of the other local boats in the area. There are two different types. There's a class A and a class B. Uh, class A is primarily used for merchant vessels. Anything over, I believe it's 300 gross tons traveling internationally needs to have an AIS class A trans ponder uh, transceiver and also any passenger vessel all of that they're uh, military they're all required to have AIS transceivers so and they're actually becoming quite popular among um, smaller vessels as well and that's where class B transceivers come into play and that's what I have aboard El Haleo so since um, my VHF antenna is located quite high off the water I should have pretty good reception I should be able to see every boat with AIS within um, probably 8 to 10 nautical miles of me. And of course that'll change, you know, depending upon obstructions, if you're in a heavily wooded area or whatever. Um, it'll impact that. So, But I should have pretty good range and I should definitely be able to see everything in the immediate area. I decided to go with the Vesper Watchmate XB8000 AIS transponder. And I went with this one because it does have Wi-Fi and my navigation program is tablet based. So my nav program is just on my um, iPad and I needed something with Wi-Fi to be able to connect to my nav program. So that's why I went with this one. And also it did have some other features which I liked. It does have collision prevention and with an external alarm. So if it assumes or if it calculates that we're gonna hit something, it will uh, sound an alarm. Uh, it does have an anchor watch, so when I'm at anchor, if my anchor drags, it'll alarm as well. And there is a man overboard feature. I don't know much about that yet, but I am interested in it for the dogs um, in case a dog falls overboard. It must use either GPS tags or um, radio uh, tags of some sort. And if it goes outside the uh, bounds of your boat, it must trigger an alarm as well. So I have to look more into that. Um, it does have a NIMIA 2000 gateway, so I can send the GPS data from the transponder to other um, pieces of equipment if I decide to get those. You know, there are chart, uh, chart plotters. I've already got my nav program, so I don't need that. But there are like course heading um, instruments and that kind of stuff that you can route that information to, so you don't need multiple GPS antennas. Here is the basic layout of it. Here's the transponder. Um, your VHF antenna comes into the splitter, that goes into the transponder. The GPS antenna also plugs into there, and then your VHF radio is also connected to the splitter. Uh, and the Wi-Fi connects to your NAF programs, and that's, I've got the tablet-based one. And also different instruments if you do want to connect um, later on down the line. I did set that up um, so I can connect to that if I need to. I did purchase the unit from uh, Defender Marine and when you purchase these units you do need to have all of your information ready because they pre-program it so they program it with your boat name your MMSI number your um, call sign and also you do need to put your the dimensions of your boat and the relative position of the GPS antenna in relation to your boats dimensions and that's so it can get accurate data to other boats on your course heading if you're gonna collide and stuff like that you do also need to submit your FCC broadcast license. So when you 
uh, install a VHF antenna, or I'm sorry, VHF radio on a boat. In order to put in an MMSI number, you do need to have an FCC broadcast license, and you can get those online uh, through the FCC. And if you're traveling internationally, you do need to have one of those licenses. Hey y'all, so I got the AIS up and running and let's see, I, I finished the install this morning and I ran out of battery so I didn't record that, but here is the antenna splitter. So this splits, this is our incoming VHF antenna and that splits, this one goes up to our VHF radio and this other one I've got routed behind here down to our AS, AIS unit, which is right here. And same with power. I was originally going to tie the power in here, but I want to clean this up. There are redundant fuses here, so I can get rid of a lot of this wiring. And I just thought it'd be neater if I routed that back behind here as well. So I did all of that this morning. And apologies for the mess. Whenever I start a project it seems like everything gets really freaking messy so here is the AIS unit itself and I had to mount these two things um, I was limited this here the splitter I had to mount up here because the VHF um, cord from the antenna the antenna is way up on top of the mast and that is routed along the ceiling here and comes down here so I didn't I only had <laughs> really one option of where to mount that and that's fine um, I actually think it turned out okay it's it's tucked back in there it's not gonna snag on anything and once I get some of these wires cleaned up um, that'll be nice and I there's a cover for this too uh, this is for the autopilot and stuff but I had to remove this cover to get back in here so got to put that back on and up in here, um, I hadn't done much with this since I switched the electrical system over to the lithium iron phosphate system. Um, these were here for the lead acid batteries. Each battery had its own switch. And I had all of the wires still on here. I just tied the two together. But I wanted this space back here to mount the wiring for the AIS. So I had to clean this up a little bit, so I got rid of all the redundancies. I tied everything together. I tied everything together in one switch. And I decided to leave, I wasn't originally gonna remove these switches and keep them, but you know, I'd end up covering this space anyways on the front. So I figured why not just leave the switches there and if I ever need them for something, they're there or I can remove them and mount them somewhere else. Then I don't have to monkey around trying to cover these holes and then there'd be a recessed you know area up in here so I just thought it'd be it'd look okay and I got the space I needed so I've got our our um, this is tied into the battery system I just tied it in right at this switch there are fuses for both the splitter and the AIS unit they're very low amp draw so those are only two amp fuses um, but I've got it tied in here and I put in this terminal strip here to connect everything. And if you look at this wire, there are a bunch of other wires here. So I can actually hook up uh, NEMA 2000 devices, uh, chart plotters, and you know, um, direction, I don't even know what they're called, direction meters or whatever, heading, I guess course heading um, displays. And that'll just read directly off of the GPS. So the GPS on this unit can be used for a lot of different things, which is nice. Um, and there is an external alarm. So when I'm at anchor, this has an anchor alarm and that uses the little blue and brown wires. And I'm gonna, I have to get one more ring terminal to hook up the blue wire to this terminal bar. And then I'll be able to install um, the alarm and I'm just gonna put them right here. It's just a little alarm. They are loud as heck. And then there's a mute button. So I'll put both of those right there. And that will be an, a collision alarm. So if the program determines that I'm in danger of hitting something, uh, another boat, it'll actually sound that alarm. Or And at night when I anchor, I can actually set an anchor alarm 
And if the anchor drags, that will also trigger that alarm. So that's awesome. Um, so here's the AIS unit itself. And I could have mounted this up top by the splitter, um, but I figured down here just kind of kept it a little bit more out of the way. And the white wire here is the GPS antenna. So that was kind of the limiting, um, I guess the limiting distance, because I couldn't extend that. I'm sure I could have gotten a little extender. It's just like a little coax connection here. So I probably could have extended that and put it somewhere else, but it, it worked out good. So everything is up and running. Here's our antenna, and there's our data cable and our power cable. So that's this cable here that's all split. Um, so everything is mounted and in here, and it's working. I did a quick little video on the iPad where I connected the iPad to this unit and um, it connects to here through Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi does not need an internet connection which is nice so it'll and you guys I'll insert that video so you guys will see um, what it looks like with all the different boats on the screen so alrighty I finally got this done which is nice it's a, a project that was that I got out of the way and I still need to do a lot of cleanup everywhere so here I got the Wi-Fi connected to the transponder uh, to receive all of the data. And I just want to double check to make sure that it's connected to the nav program. And it is connected. So here you can see, once you click on that first boat, it does show a little bit of information. At this point, the information was still being received and filtering through the program. Class B responders, Class B transponders don't have the same priority as Class A transponders, so it takes just a few seconds to get all of the data to come through. And I looked around at a bunch of other boats. I'm going to skip a lot of that because this video is going long. And I'm just going to get to one boat where it actually shows the course and the heading. So let's find that. Here you can see this boat has a line indicating its direction of travel. And it also gives the speed and course direction, that kind of information. So once I get into areas that are more populated, that is definitely going to come in handy. So that wraps up the install of the AIS system. All in all, it was pretty straightforward, um, and I, I'm looking forward to getting out there and actually using it. If you want to track El Haleo in real time, now that we have AIS, you can do that. If you go to a website called Marine Traffic and just click on it, it actually shows all of the boats in the world that have AIS, or most of them anyway. Uh, once you get to this website, you do have to set up an account. It's pretty straightforward. It's free. Just email, password, and then you're off and running. So once you get in here, you can actually, in this search bar, uh, you can actually just click on any boat and you can zoom in and stuff. It's actually kind of neat. So if you see a ship going by somewhere and you want to know more about it, you can just click on it and it'll actually show you uh, what it is and where it is and that kind of stuff. So... It's kind of neat. Well, there's a big yacht. Um, yeah. So, if you're looking for a specific vessel, you can just type in El Haleo, E L J A L E O, and only one comes up. And I've got it saved in my favorite, so it has a little heart by it. Yours won't, but there is only one El Haleo in the world with the A I S. So, that is me. So you can click on that <clears throat> and it brings up information on the vessel it's got a photo which is sideways here I don't know why that is but it just shows location um, MMSI call sign that kind of stuff where it's flag dimensions all sorts of information here and there will be more information once I start traveling but you can click here which is show on live map and it'll actually zoom in <clears throat> to exactly where El Haleo is located and it is, if you zoom in a little closer, it is the big throbbing target right in the Delaware City Marina Yard, which is where El Haleo is currently located. 
So that's how you can track us. Um, you should be able to see us anywhere in the world that we go, which is kind of fun. So I hope you enjoy that. I'd like to give a massive shout out to our Patreon crew, Joan and Juddy Judnick, Val and Chris Alcorn, Denise and Eli Sackett, Joan and Jim Limbo, Sherry Erickson, Genesis Ava Limbo, and Deb Shaw. Your guys' support means the world to me. Uh, without you guys, I probably wouldn't even make these videos, so I really, really appreciate it. If you are interested in joining our Patreon crew, there is a link down below. Uh, that gives you access to our Patreon, where there's a bunch of extra videos, photos. I try and upload something every day when I'm traveling, uh, and it also helps support the channel. So if you're interested in that, click that link below. If you do like our videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us out. I'll see you all next week.